Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How You Can Sell More Cars with Google Analytics. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today. And today's webinar is being presented by DealerOn. And for anyone who isn't familiar with DealerOn, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning websites. DealerOn was named the top-rated website provider by Driving Sales in 2011, and DealerOn customers were winners of the Spring 2012 Digital Dealer Website Excellence Awards. DealerOn is so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that we are the only company in the industry to offer a lead guarantee program. That's right, leads guaranteed. So if your website company isn't guaranteeing you leads, well then maybe you should check us out at DealerOn.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We are very pleased to have Chris Derringer as our presenter today. Now, Chris is the Vice President of Marketing here at DealerOn, Inc. He's got 12 years of digital marketing optimization experience and success. And Chris is an expert in all aspects of online marketing and e-commerce, including SEO, paid search, conversion optimization, web analytics, a, B, and multivariate website testing. Now, Chris came to DealerOn from Network Solutions, the domain name, website, email, and online marketing company for small businesses, where he spent seven years helping lead the online marketing strategy and analytics areas. Chris is a Google AdWords and Google Analytics certified expert, a 2012 Mobile Web Awards judge, and a past member of the Web Analytics Association. Chris keeps up to date with all advancements regarding Google Analytics and Google AdWords, and he can be reached at chris at dealeron.com. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we're going to respond by email later today. Also, don't forget a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to be emailed to you later today for your reference, and please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And I wanted you guys all to know, DealerOn is going to be at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in Las Vegas, baby. So if you're going to be there, please come visit us at booth 1211. Now, the Digital Dealer Conference and Expo is quite simply the biggest and the best event for dealers and managers to learn how to use technology and the internet to sell and service more vehicles more profitably. It's going to be October 23, 24, and 25 at the Mirage. And guess what? I'm going to be there. And I love meeting people, so please come and visit me at booth 1211. It's going to be a great conference. It always is. And while you're there, check out the speaking sessions from some members of the DealerOn executive team. We have Ali, Amir, and Jeff. It just doesn't get any better than that. So we look forward to seeing you there. And just so you know, we are going to be broadcasting live from the Digital Dealer Convention on Thursday, October 25th. It's going to be a great day. So we hope you can check in too. So also, at the conclusion of today's webinar, you're going to receive a short survey. Please fill it out because we're always looking for some quality feedback from you, our valued audience. And today we're going to randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to get some Google prizes. And fill out that survey and you can qualify for a free analytics review by a Google Analytics certified specialist. You don't want to miss that. So let's get started. Let's learn how you can sell more cars with Google Analytics. Chris Daringer, how the heck are you today? I am fantastic, Eliana. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And I have to tell you, you know, every week, you know, I always tell people about the surveys, and yes, we get a lot of people who fill in the surveys, and we always say thank you for filling out those surveys. But every week, one of the questions we ask is, give us some ideas on topics you'd like to hear about. And the number one topic request we get is Google Analytics. So it's about time we got you sitting here on my webinar and talking about some Google Analytics. And we are going to wow the audience today, aren't we? I believe we are, Eliana. And uh, I am very excited to be here. Um, I hope that everyone uh, from, takes away from today's webinar a better understanding of how they can make more money online with Google Analytics. Uh, I would like it if you might be able to poll our audience this morning uh, just to find out about their 
level of understanding of Google Analytics and what they hope to get out of it. I think that's a great idea. Audience, guess what? We need you to turn to your computer screens right now and check out the question we have for you right now. And it's an important one. We want to know, how are you currently using Google Analytics? So for this question, select all that apply. You don't have to pick just one answer. You can pick all the ones that apply to you. So are you measuring the effectiveness of your online marketing investments? Are you measuring the effectiveness of changes to your website? Are you validating the performance of your online vendors? Are you using Google Analytics to diagnose problems with your website or your campaigns? Or maybe you're strictly using it for reporting on your return on investment for your marketing activities. If it's one, if it's all, if it's just a few, let us know. We want to know that way Chris can really tailor what he's going to talk about to you today regarding Google Analytics. Because let me tell you, I got, I got news for you. I didn't even know that there was a... <laughs> A web analytics association. Of course there is though, because Chris was part of that. So there isn't a question you could possibly, possibly ask Chris Daringer that he would not know about Google Analytics. Okay, guess what? We have a majority of the votes in. We're going to close the poll and share the results with you. So it looks like we got an even split on the first two answers, Chris. 64% of our attendees said that they use Google Analytics to both measure the effectiveness of their online marketing investments and measure the effectiveness of changes to their website. 55% they use it to validate the performance of their vendors and 45% say they use it to diagnose problems with their website and 45% say they use it to report the ROI for their online marketing activities. What do you think about that, Chris? Well, it sounds like our attendees are a pretty sophisticated group. Uh, they're already doing many of the things that um, are what make Google Analytics such a powerful tool. So I just want to make sure that, we, that everyone understands. Today we're going to try and make sure that we go over things that can help you make better decisions, hopefully make you more money with your digital marketing and your website. Okay. So, I want you to know, too, we... Um, you know, Andrew just wrote in, he says, I'm a Google Analytics idiot, hence my presence <laughs> here on this webinar. So just so we can tell and, and prepare everyone, because, you know, Google Analytics, it's, it's confusing, it's addictive to some, it's very daunting for many, including me. I'm going to sit here, I'm going to say it. it's a little bit daunting. So, Chris, is this webinar going to cover basics, or is it going to be a little bit more advanced? Can you give us a little bit of... Well, it'll, it'll probably be somewhat advanced, but um, we're, we're going to not only cover some advanced concepts, but we're also going to talk about some of the basics that you need to do in order to take advantage of some of those more sophisticated tools. So even if you're not the person who is actively managing the analytics at your dealership, if you are managing people who are doing that, or if you work closely with that person or that company, then you will learn things that can help you speak better with them more intelligently and uh, use whatever resources you have at your disposal so that you can more effectively optimize your, your online marketing. I think that sounds great. Andrew, sit tight. You're going to learn a lot about Google Analytics today. And if anyone does feel like it's getting in over their head, don't worry. Ask questions, send your questions along for me to post to Chris at the end of the webinar. Also, don't forget, after the webinar, you can check in on that short survey that's going to come to you and fill out that you want some help for an analytics review by a Google Analytics Certified Specialist, and we'll hook you up with that too. Please, Chris, without further ado, dazzle us. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Eliana. Uh, as Eliana mentioned, I have been optimizing websites for almost a dozen years now. And um, that includes e-commerce sites when I was at Network Solutions and for the last four plus years here at Dealer on car dealer websites. And one of the things that um, actually troubles me is the data that we're looking at right here are website conversion rates for dealers across the country. This data is actually from Datium. And if you're not familiar with Datium, Datium is an analytics provider specifically targeted for the automotive industry. Datium has code on about 10,000, 12,000, somewhere in their dealership websites across the country. 
And uh, these metrics show that over 50% of all dealer websites are still converting at under 2%. Now, that bothers me because we've got all of these tools. We've got Google Analytics. We've got Omniture. We've got Datium. We have best practices that we can adopt from other industries, from other from e-commerce sites like Amazon or uh, Overstock. And still today, over half of all dealer websites are converting at under 2%. One of the things that really troubles me is, you know, we, we bring on uh, customers at Dealer On, and as we do, we make sure that we document their current lead volumes. And we've been doing this for about three years. Now, every time we bring someone on, we look at their lead volumes from the prior provider, and then I have seen this, I've seen this over and over, I've seen this probably hundreds of times at this point, where simply by taking a dealer's website from a platform that is not necessarily optimized for conversion and user experience and navigation to one that is, you can see two, three, four times as many leads come out of the same traffic. In fact, I will guarantee you that there are many dealers right now who are in this area. They're selling cars in their metro area. Perhaps they're in Dallas. They have competitors who are selling exactly the same type of inventory to the same metropolitan area. They have the same user base of people, and some of those guys are generating two, three, four times as many leads. So it is clear that we have a lot of opportunity for a huge percentage of the industry, and I hope that everyone takes away today some tools that they can use to move themselves up the spectrum of conversion rate. Chris is a master with that. Uh, that Sorry about that. Right <laughs> so the, another thing that I want to talk to everyone about is the is your marketing spend. So probably there are many dealers out there who aren't that concerned with their website because they know that they have 80% or more of their marketing budget in offline media, which might have been fine a few years ago. What we're looking at here is JD Power data. So in 2005, roughly um, every consumer who was doing uh, searches for vehicles that they were in the market for would search Google, do whatever, and then they would eventually visit four dealerships in their buying process. Now we know in 2010 and 2011 and 2012 that almost everyone is going to Google and researching the vehicles that they're going to buy. And they are only visiting, on average, 1.3 dealerships uh, going to their physical showrooms. This means that two out of every three people who are buying a car are only going to one dealership. They are doing all of their shopping online, and they are only going to the dealership to execute their purchase. So even if you've got 80%, 90% of your sp marketing spend in offline, media, if your website is not conducive to user experience, to it doesn't provide people a quick, easy, intuitive way to navigate, and it's not designed for conversion rate, then you are going to be wasting almost all of your marketing budget because everyone is coming to your website before they are coming to your showroom. So before we talk about uh, Google Analytics, and how you can use it. I want to make sure everyone understands how to make sure that we have that tool in place for us. In the same way that you wouldn't build a house without first putting in a foundation, we can't actually start using Google Analytics until we have it coded on our site. I think that roughly 75 to 80 percent of dealer websites at this point have Google Analytics on them. So if you know that your site doesn't have it, it's very easy to get the code from Google Analytics, if you just Google it, you get that code, you send it to your website provider. If your website provider has any issue with getting it on your site, please send me an email, give me a call. 
I know of at least one website provider that will have no issue putting that together for you. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> so one, one, of the, one of the other things that we have to do in order to start measuring the online spend that, that we have out there is to begin to track all of our online media. Now for Google AdWords, it's pretty easy because the AdWords interface actually integrates with the Google Analytics on your dealership website. However, if you're spending money on Bing or Yahoo, if you're doing any sort of QR campaigns, if you have an a email provider who's mailing your, your customer base and prospects, unless they are setting up tracking, you're going to be either missing the campaigns that are driving traffic to your site for email, you're going to have no idea that the traffic is coming to your site from the QR codes. If you're using Bing or Yahoo, you are most likely mingling that traffic with your actual organic traffic that's coming to your site. So you are probably overestimating the value of your organic search on Bing and Yahoo, and you're blind to how much traffic is coming from the paid search campaigns that you're doing on Bing and Yahoo. Fortunately, Google provides a very easy to use tool. If you Google Google URL builder, it'll, it'll be the first result that comes up. All you have to do, or have your provider do, is go to this site, put in the URL for the page that you want your traffic to land on. You put in the source of that traffic. If you're advertising on Yahoo or Bing, you just put in Yahoo or Bing. If you're doing paid search, you simply add paid search as the medium. You include your keyword terms, and then you name the campaign. So it takes you three to five minutes to set up the manual tagging that you need to apply to any of your campaigns, and you're ready to start measuring the effectiveness of that traffic coming to your website. So Eliana, I have one other favor to ask of you, and that's if you could poll our audience about uh, goals and whether they are familiar with goals uh, for Google Analytics. I think that's a great idea. Audience, please turn to your screens now and let us know, have you set goals or values in Google Analytics for your dealership websites? For this question, all you have to do is pick one of the following answers. Simple yes, a no, or you're just not sure. So goals or values in Google Analytics, and of course once we get a majority of the votes, we'll close the poll and share the results. And I think that is plenty of votes. Thank you so much everyone for voting and let's share those results. So Chris, just so you know, of today's audience, 62 percent of today's audience says they have not set goals or values in Google Analytics. 21 percent said they have, 17 percent said that they're not sure. Well, um, I, you know, it would be great if everyone had already done that, but it would also uh, take away some of the value of the presentation that I'm providing. Okay. So it's great to hear that there are some people out there who haven't done this yet who are going to be able to learn what is hopefully going to be something valuable in Google Analytics. So what we're looking at right now is your standard login screen when you, when you get to Google Analytics. So I'm just going to walk through very quickly how uh, someone who's logging into Google Analytics would go about setting up a goal. So once you're on the admin screen, I'm sorry, let me go back. So you set up your profile and you click on your profile which is right here. After you click on your profile, you want to set up your goals. So you click on goals. Google offers you the opportunity to set up to 20 goals with your standard profile setup. Just click on goals and it will give you this screenshot. You identify what goal you're going to track. Let's say it's a vehicle lead. And then you determine how Google is going to track it. Now you can set up different goals. What I recommend is having goals that are pages that you want that traffic to get to. Typically that would be a thank you page for a lead. It could be how much time you want the person to spend on the site, but what we're going to focus on today are the places on your site you want traffic to go to and how much value you're going to assign to that traffic. After you've done that, 
So you've identified that it's a vehicle lead. You have said it's going to be a URL. I've put in my thank you uh, page. Google gives you the opportunity, and this is very important, to select a match type, whether it's exact match or what we're going to recommend, which is what we're calling head match here. So instead of writing out, uh, so when I put in head match, what I'm actually doing is telling Google, if I get, some, if I get someone to come to this thank you page, excuse me, then I want, I want to count that as a completed goal, even though my website provider will be appending other information that they're using for their internal purposes, like my name or my lead ID. So again, this is something where you're going to have to work with your website provider. We want to know what are the URLs for all of the pages that I want to set up with goals. For instance, someone comes to my vehicle uh, details page and submits a lead. I want to track the thank you page and know that they submitted a lead so I can count that. Someone fills out a credit app lead. I want to know that someone did that so I can credit the marketing campaign or the web page on my site that led to that conversion. Someone comes to my hours and direction page. Now, again, I may have pages on my site that I want traffic to, to go to, but doesn't necessarily result in them taking an action that identifies them to me. They don't fill out a lead form or they don't call my dealership, but they have taken an action that leads me to believe that they're going to show up in my showroom and that I want to encourage on my site and with my marketing activity. If that happens, I want to create a goal for it. So if someone comes to my hours and direction page, I want to credit my campaign that drove them to that page for that visit. If someone prints an e-brochure on my site, I want to know about that and I want to be able to credit my marketing that uh, was responsible for that appropriately. If someone visits a vehicle details page, that may be something that I uh, want to encourage and that I want to track. If someone comes to my service, the service area of my website and prints a coupon or prints directions or schedules an online appointment, I want to be able to credit the appropriate parts of my website and my marketing campaigns that led to that conversion. Uh, oh, Chris, every dealership should be doing that one. So Eliana, I have another uh, question that I'd like you to ask the audience, and that is what, well actually I think you have the question right there, so why don't you read it off so I don't, <laughs> I I don't mess it up. Audience members, this, now we're going to test you because you know, we already know that the, uh, the webinar audiences that we've been getting are pretty darn savvy, but we want to test you. We want to know what you think. How much do you think a vehicle lead from your website is worth? How much do you think it's worth? Do you think it's, it's worth about under $20? Do you think it's more like $25? Do you think it's worth $40? Do you think it's worth $60 to your dealership? Or do you think that a vehicle lead from your website is worth more than $60? Let us know. Once we have a majority of the votes, we're going to close the poll and share the results, and then I'm sure Chris is going to school us all on, on what it is actually worth. Am I right? <laughs> Well, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. I'm curious. I'm curious to get the answers. Uh, you know what? Votes are still coming in. Almost everyone has voted. Oh my gosh! Still more votes. Okay, so we're almost. We almost have everyone voted now. So if there's somebody next to you who hasn't voted, nudge them a little bit. <laughs> I think that's quite enough. Thank you, everyone, so much. My goodness, almost everyone's voted. So let's close the poll and share the results. Chris Daringer, I want you to know that. 45% of today's audience say that a vehicle lead from their website is worth more than $60. Wow. Yeah, and 29% of today's audience think it's more like $25. A mere 10% think it's about $40. 10% also think it's $60. And there's this stubborn 6% of people on today's audience who think it's worth under $20. So I'm well, curious, <laughs> what is it worth? Well, I'll tell you, Eliana, um, in putting the presentation together, um, 
we were just trying to come up with a, a rough number. And in thinking about third-party leads, they're worth, they cost about $20. And a vehicle lead off of the typical dealership website will convert at roughly three times the uh, rate that a third-party lead will convert at. So our ballpark was $60. What I want to emphasize here is that there is no one right answer. The amount of money, the value that you have for, one of, for a vehicle lead coming off of your dealership website is related to such things as you know, how, what, it, what is advertising cost in your marketplace? What is the closing rate for, for leads coming to your dealership? There, there are a number of factors that, that can impact this. So it's not, it's not $60. It's completely dependent on your sales process and your BDC and the, the area that you're doing business in. Again, we use roughly $60 as a proxy for it. But what is more important is that you go through the exercise yourself so that you can start valuing the traffic and the leads that you're generating off of your marketing campaigns. So the next um, lead that we, we came up with was our credit app lead. And our thought there is, is that that's worth about 25% more than the typical vehicle lead. You've got a consumer who, while they may be credit challenged, is a little bit further down the, the sales funnel. So again, these are all values that you should be figuring out for your dealership and your particular circumstances. The point is, that all of these goals that we have um, listed here probably have some value to your dealership. And if you're not already tracking these and crediting the changes to your website that are driving increases or decreases in these, if you're not crediting the marketing campaigns that are generating these incremental, ten, you know, these incremental hours and direction visits, people printing e-brochures, and again, this might actually be worth $25 to a dealer as opposed to five. It might be more valuable than someone coming to your map and directions page. Maybe every vehicle details page view that you get is worth roughly $2 to your dealership. Again, I'm not saying that we have listed every one of the goals that you should be thinking about for your dealership. That's really something that you should be thinking about with your marketing team, with all of your online vendors, with your website provider, how are we going to get more people to each one of these things, and how valuable is each one of these conversions? So now that we have our foundation in place, we can start measuring the results that our website is producing. Here is what should be familiar to everybody who um, you know, who has some familiarity with Google Analytics. This is the basic login screen that you get. This is the, the screen that you come to when you're going to look at your traffic, all of your visits. Here we have selected looking at the last 10 or 11 months for this particular dealership. If we go to overview, we can drill down and look at monthly visits over this time frame. We've got, uh, we can choose which segments we want to look at. Sorry about that. We can choose which segments we want to look at. This could be paid search. This could be organic search. It could be any segment, email marketing, any sort of um, segment, a city. In the same way that you can do that for, via, for visits, you can do that for goals and value once you have them created. You can set up the time frame that you want to analyze. You can look at, uh, you just drill down into the goals here, and it will provide you this screen. You can look at it by month, week, day, and you can look at any segment of your online marketing. You can look at paid search, you can look at organic search, you can look at email, you can look at banner advertising, you can look at Yahoo versus Bing, you can look at Google versus AOL, any combination of of uh, detail that you are tracking, and that again, that is why we want to make sure that we've got all of our sources of traffic coded in our um, in our um, through the URL builder. 
we can track any of those and assess if we see a decline in a particular value, we can go back and look at that time period and compare it to an earlier time period or a later time period and see what is causing our goals to go up or down or our value to go up or down. We can identify cha you know, changes in vendor channels. We can highlight things that we know that we've done or things that we don't know that we've done that we want to then ask our vendors or our website provider about. We can drill down at the weekly level. We can compare non-paid search, uh, paid search to non-paid search. We have the power of being able to analyze not just the leads, not just the page views, but the actual marketing return that we are getting out of changes to our website and changes to our marketing mix online. Here we've got an example, and I just happen to know that this particular dealer um, stopped doing paid search this per at the end of this particular month. So again, you can see if, if it's a change that you don't understand, it's the perfect opportunity to go back to your vendor and talk with them about why something either went down or why something improved. Hey, how can we do more of this? How can we move some of our marketing from this channel to this channel? Because we're seeing better results. So then after you have analyzed all of your traffic, you're looking at your lead volumes, we have the eternal question of, who gets credit? So every dealer has multiple channels that they're investing in. They're investing in paid search, they're investing in display, they're investing in an SEO provider, they've got a website provider, they've got an email uh, marketing provider. So now that you have all of these sources of your marketing coded, how do you determine who gets credit? Is it the guy who throws the pass or the guy who makes the shot? And Google, just in the last year, has come out with some pretty powerful tools to be able to help a dealer or any online marketer do that. So what we're looking at here is what Google has called its multi-channel funnel report. Again, if you go down under goals in your reporting, you'll get to the multi-channel area. Click on that and Google will show you the number of conversions that occurred over what time, whatever time period you're looking at. We happen to be looking at the last two months for this particular dealer. During that time, they had nearly 1,200 leads. Of that, of that amount, almost 40% of those leads had more than one touch point from their marketing channels that they're tracking that assisted that visitor to go from coming to their site to converting a lead. Here we're looking at the percentage of conversions that actually overlap with other channels. So 43% of the people who came to this dealer's website from organic search overlapped with some other channel that they are tracking. In fact, here we can look at, so this area here is the organic search uh, leads that came in during this period, and this little area here is how much of that lead volume came from other channels before it submitted a lead. If you are not already looking at this for your site, you are potentially overlooking a lot of the value that your online vendor, regardless of who it is, is providing for you. So Google also gives us what they call their assisted conversion report. So their assisted conversions gives us visibility into the channels that are driving traffic to our site that doesn't convert on that particular visit, but comes back later and submits a lead or goes and fills out an e-brochure or prints a service coupon. Any one of our goals that we were talking about before that provides value to our dealership that we set up the tracking for can be tracked through Google's multi-channel funnel report. Here we are looking at the reporting that if you were simply looking at goals without the multi-channel funnel report that you would see. So in two months, my paid search provider generated 265 leads 
for me. So someone came to my site from a paid search ad, navigated around, eventually got to a lead form, submitted a lead, and finished. However, I had 153 visitors come through on paid search and not fill out a lead during that visit and then come back to my site again in the next 30 days and submit a lead. If I am only tracking the last conversion that came in from that channel, I'm only acknowledging that I had 265 leads during that two month period. I am missing out on 153 other visits that helped convert the leads, the 1,200 leads that my uh, online marketing drove in that month. So I am possibly missing out on 58% more value that my channel has provided for me than if I'm simply looking at click to close leads. Google also provides what they call their top conversion paths. So here we're looking at traffic that uh, originally visited my site on an organic search uh, click, came back to my site later, didn't convert the first time, and submitted a lead. Here we're looking at people who came from an organic search and did not submit a lead, came back later, just directly typed in my domain name and submitted a lead. This happened for this dealer 35 times in that two month period. You can start to you can start to appreciate the complexity and the interplay of all of your marketing channels. So you see a lot of direct uh, traffic at the end of the funnels, whereas you see all of, the tr all of the channels that you're probably paying for, your paid search, your referral. If, if we had email in here, we'd be paying for that. You can even uh, look at display versus paid search versus organic search. Just to give you an understanding of how much um, diversity there is in all of these paths, we are only looking at 20, 25 of the 160, 159 unique ways that people committed, or I'm sorry, that people submitted a lead during this two month period for this particular dealership. So now that we've had an, now that we have had an opportunity to see how we can effectively measure all of our marketing channels, I want to talk about some very quick things that dealers can do to quickly diagnose current problems that they might have on their websites. So the first question is, does my site have a bounce problem? Do I have a lot of traffic coming into my site that sees my, the page that I've driven them to, most likely, from paid search, and leaves my site without uh, interacting at all with any of the pages. So here we're looking at an actual dealer's traffic. And this, again, is one of the basic reports that you pull up in Google. You come to the traffic sources, you come to all traffic, and then we're going to drill down on the landing, we're going to drill down here in a second on the bounce rate for each of the landing pages. So I've actually uh, grayed out some specific dealer information. But what I recommend is you use this advanced search function here. When you click on that, Google gives you the opportunity to, to just focus on the pages that are costing you the most money. So for this dealer, we're just going to look at pages that have a bounce rate of over 50% and had at least 50 visits last month. You can see that the first page, the very first page in this report, had almost 900 visits last month and a bounce rate of 57%. Think about how much volume you and think about how much spend you are wasting driving that traffic to your website. If you have organic search landing pages that have bounce rates like this, then there's a problem with your landing page because Google has already identified your landing page as being one of the most relevant web pages on the internet. So if you have organic search traffic coming here and it's bouncing at that rate, you need to fix your page. 
if you're doing paid search and you have this sort of bounce rate, there could be a couple of problems and you're going to need to sort of dig in uh, more depth with both your paid search provider, possibly your website provider, possibly other folks on your team. But you want to begin to assess, is it the traffic that I'm driving that isn't qualified or is it the landing page that I'm driving them to that isn't contextual for that traffic? So you can't tell immediately from looking at this number, but there's a problem there of some kind. Google also allows you, when you set up your Google Analytics, to connect that with a Webmaster Tools account. Google will actually tell you, for all of your most popular organic search terms, how many, excuse me, how many searches there were for that term, how many clicks your site got, what the average position of your dealership was for that search term, and even a click-through rate. It is getting harder and harder every week to figure out exactly where you rank for any search term because of all the localization and all of the personalization that Google does with their results. You're probably on your dealership website all the time. You would have to log out. You'd have to clear your browsing history. You would have to um, remove any personalization that Google might have developed for you in order to get the same view that Google is just providing you for free within your Google Analytics account. So I definitely advise people to look at that. So now that we have gone through some of the ways that you can analyze um, issues with your site, issues with your, um, with your organic search rankings, and what is working and not working on your online marketing. Let's talk about how you can measure the performance of particular pages on your site. First question might be, is my home page working? Again, if you drill down through the content view, the in-page analytics, you get, and a lot of people aren't even aware that Google provides this, you get a, a next click report with a visual interface so you can actually look through and see, oh, I had a 13% bounce rate on my homepage last month. I had 9% of my folks clicking down through my, um, through my Camry uh, link here. I had 22% of my folks going through my new inventory. It's amazing the, the information that's available in Google Analytics that a lot of folks who already have the code on their page don't know about and aren't yet taking advantage of. I know that this page, Eliana, probably looks pretty crazy. That makes my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's, it's not the easiest thing to digest, so I want to sort of walk people through it. If you go into the visitor flow report for your, for your website, Google will, act, will lay out exactly how all of your traffic is moving through your site. So you can see that for visitors last month who came from the United States, 7,000 of them started on my homepage as they visited my site. Of that amount, I had 2,000 go through my, uh, my, my new inventory. I had 3,000 go through, excuse me, my used inventory. I also had almost 300 folks go and schedule a service appointment. So Google gives you the, uh, the tools for you to understand how people are actually using your website. You can do this with any page on your site. You can click over and drill further into. Now, I don't want to do that here. I just want to make sure that dealers are aware that these tools exist. Even if you're not going to go sit down and drill through these things, it's probably a good idea for you to set up some time with your website provider or some of your other vendors and talk about how you can impact some of these metrics. Finally, um, I want to say that I don't think that Google does their best work in putting together um, an easy to use dashboard for tracking changes that are occurring uh, on your dealership website and changes that are occurring in the performance of your online channels. What I would suggest to anyone is you create a very simple Excel spreadsheet. And if, if you are interested uh, at DealerOn, we have created a little template which we'd be happy to pass along to you. Anyway, you just go into Google, 
It's very simple to pull all of these metrics. Um, the, the template that we have actually generates all of these changes, whether they're red or green. Then you can start looking at, are my visits down from last month? Are the leads on my site down or up this month versus last month? Probably most importantly, is the value that I'm generating out of my online marketing going up or down? Which way am I trending? I'm surprised. Google Analytics seems to have everything on it, but you're saying that it doesn't have something as simple as that. It, it would be it would be great if Google, um, and I'm I'm sure that they are evolving to something like this. They just don't have it in one handy place at the moment. So, unfortunately, um, the way I would suggest people do is just go in, grab the data very quickly. Uh, you only have to do it once a month, probably take you five or 10 minutes. And then you have a nice little chart that you can show anybody at your dealership and share with your vendors about how well your site is performing month over month. So with that, Eliana, um, I guess we're ready for any questions that might be out there. Okay, well, and of course, if you have any questions for Chris, send them on in. We're gonna try and get through these questions as quickly as possible and get done by the top of the hour. First question comes to us from Emily. She said, how many goals slash values are you recommending that we should set? That is a great question, Emily. Uh, I would, at, a, at a, the very minimum, I would recommend that every lead submission page on your site have goals set for it. I would even recommend that you create an, a unique goal for every page on, for every uh, lead form on your site. If you make changes to particular parts of your site, you want to be able to track those particular lead forms and whether those are going down or up. So I would not only recommend every lead form on your site, I would recommend any page on your site that represents high value to you. Again, if, if, a, if your website provider can work with you and show you how to track prints of coupons, prints of e-brochures, those things are almost as good as actually getting a lead. The, the consumer is not giving you their contact information. They probably just don't want you to market to them, but they are indicating as strongly as they can that they are interested in coming into your dealership and you want to be able to make sure that you are able to track that back to whatever the campaign or whatever the change was that you made on your website so that you can make more of those changes and so that you can shift your marketing spend to those channels that are driving you know service coupon prints that are driving e-brochure downloads that's a great question Thank you so much for that question, Emily, and thank you, Chris. Hey, Chris, why don't you put it on the next slide so people can see your mugshot? Nice. Absolutely. <laughs> and of course, everyone, Chris's email address and phone number is right on there. So if you have another question that maybe you didn't want to ask on the webinar, but you would certainly like help with, no better person to ask than the Google Analytics expert himself, Chris Derringer. Okay, next question comes to us from John, and he says, well, and this was from a slide way, way, way before. He said, you are only counting emails as a lead. How do you account for phone calls or live chats? Now, was that just that dealership on that example, or is that something that you can work into Google Analytics? So this, what we're talking about here is meant to track um, online interactions with the dealership. There are ways that you can track engagements with chat, uh, you certainly don't have the sort of reporting in Google Analytics that you can get from your chat provider. And I strongly recommend that, every, that everyone out there incorporate the chats and try and tie those back to the marketing activities and uh, tie back any of your phone calls. I would recommend that anyone out there use a company that can track phone calls back to the source of that marketing. There, there are companies that provide that, and if, uh, if you're not aware of them, you can uh, either give me a call or shoot me an email, but I, it's, a, it's a great point. I, I really recommend it, and you know, if you're only looking, and if you're only looking at uh, your paid search 
at your uh, submissions on your website, then you are probably missing out on 60% or more of the leads that are coming in because you're missing out on the phone calls. The one thing I will say with regards to changes on your site is that directionally, if you're getting more of these goals, like if you're getting more people to map views, if you're getting more people to e-brochures, you are probably also doing things that encourage more phone calls. Okay, John, I hope that helped you out. Certainly if you have a follow-up question, please let me know. Next question comes to us from Eric. He says, could you please explain the head match again? Absolutely. So a typical dealer-on, for instance, if someone on a dealer-on website submits a lead, not only do, does our website provide a URL with a thank you page in it, but it appends on the end of that URL a whole bunch of information about your particular lead. It might be your first name, it might be a unique identifier that we use to then pass on to a CRM company. You want to, Google will only, if you put exact match as the way that you're setting up that goal, Google will only match uh, instances where exactly what you type in there matches. So if your uh, provider is appending all that other information, it will never match your thank you uh, text. So by using uh, head match, as long as what you type in there is somewhere in or at the start of that URL, then it will count that as a goal or a lead. That's an excellent question though. <laughs> thank you very much for that question, Eric. And thank you, Chris, because I, I was lost too when you said head match. So, okay, next question comes to us from Tom. He says, if I am a dealer on website user, can we get someone to help us do an analysis? And Tom, I'm going to let you know right now before Chris answers, <laughs> that after the webinar we're going to have a survey that's going to be automatically sent to you. And if you are interested in a free analysis, I'm sorry, a free analytics review by a Google Analytics certified specialist, you let us know during that survey. Okay, Chris, take it away. <laughs> no, ab absolutely. Um, to, to Eliana's point, um, anyone who lets us know that they're interested in an analytics review uh, will be followed up with. Not a problem. Okay, and that goes for Andrew too. He wrote in, I'd be interested in having a consultant come in and help us set this up. So Andrew, let us know that you need help and we're, we're there for you, babes. Okay. Yeah, and um, just to point out, Eliana, every dealer on customer should have all of the, the basic mechanisms set up. All of their goals uh, for their lead forms should be set up. You know, one, one thing that, that we don't do out of the box on our dealer's behalf is uh, set up the values just because, as I was saying before, that is very dealership specific and it's, it's really something that, that the dealer wants to, um, to think about and um, evaluate before, before you set those up. And you know what, and it, I'm sure it, that we have a lot of dealers out there, not unlike Felicia who wrote in, We've clearly been missing out on everything that Google does. Is there other information available for beginners? So if you need help, that's what we're here to help you with. And please let us know. Like I said, don't write to me here. When you get the survey after the webinar, indicate on there that you are interested in more help regarding an analytics review. And we're there for you. Right, Chris? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Exactly. Otherwise, why do these webinars every week? Okay, next question comes to us from Deanna. She says, from the last slide, where did you, where do we get the value, um, and then she has um, uh, dollar sign numbers. So, so um, when, when you go through and assign values to all of the goals that you've created for, for the different places on your site that you know the lead form or the e-brochure print any of those things you're going to start um, accumulating value so let's say that you got a hundred website leads uh, last month and you have valued those at sixty dollars a piece and you got 
40 credit app submissions and you have valued those at $75 a piece. So you're, so right there is what, like $9,000 worth of value. So it's the sum total of all of the values of all of the goals that you set up on your website so that you can start crediting the things that you're doing like your paid search. Don't just limit it to the forms on your on your site that that are being filled out. Make sure that you're uh, taking credit for all of the activity that the the traffic that you're driving to your website is uh, undertaking. Again, if they are visiting, if somebody comes to your site from a paid search ad and they visit 20 um, vehicles on your site, that is of value to you, even if they don't call you or fill out a lead form during that visit. Okay, I hope that helped you out, and certainly if you have a follow-up question, Deanna, please let us know. Next question comes to us from Adam. He writes in, in regards to the URL builder, should I code each vendor, for instance, AutoTrader, Cars, KBB, etc., as well as pay-per-click and newsletters? So that goes back to how do you set it up properly, right? Absolutely. So. You, you can see, without doing any coding, you can see the traffic, under uh, the referral traffic that is coming to your site from places like autotradercars.com. If you are doing specific marketing activity, which you want to trap, which you, you want to, um, which you want to segment out, then you should go through and set, um, and set URLs up for, for those. For paid search, absolutely. If your provider is not doing auto-tagging in Google AdWords, you should absolutely make sure that they are setting up, uh, that they're manually setting up their URLs. Uh, if you're doing newsletters, I would strongly recommend that, that you uh, code those campaigns as well. Uh, again, any sort of, any sort of um, additional information that you can provide yourself about the marketing that you're doing um, is going to benefit you. And I, I would say that for anybody who's doing paid search on Yahoo and Bing and they don't have that set up, that is probably the biggest area that you're, um, you're misunderstanding the value that you're getting because you're probably bucketing that. Google uh, Analytics by default will bucket that as organic search traffic and so you, you, will, you will not credit your uh, paid search campaign and you're probably overvaluing um, your visibility and the value that your organic search on those, uh, on those search engines is generating. Oh, wow. Okay, so Adam, if you have a follow-up question, let me know because we're going to be closing up the show pretty soon. Good friend of dealer, oh, he wrote in, thank you. <laughs> and, and Chris, you should go back to the slide with your mug shot on it. I don't know why you keep shying away from that slide. <laughs> Sorry about that. I wanted to make sure that we were looking at the value. Uh, of there. course, of course. Okay, good friend to dealer on, Michael D. wrote in, Umdo can track phone calls by keyword for both pay-per-click and organic search. So I think this goes back a, a couple of questions before when they were asking how come we're not tracking the phone calls in the live chat. So Absolutely. Just wanted to throw that out there. And next question comes to us from Joe. John. Oh, I'm sorry, John. John says, when tracking part sale conversions, what are the national averages in terms of conversions with e-commerce? Is that something you know, Chris? Is that something you can help us with? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that I understood the question. I, I, I wrote it exactly. When tracking part sale conversions, what are the national averages in terms of conversions with e-commerce? Uh, when you're tracking parts sales? It says part, like, but maybe he meant parts, yeah. So um, that was from John? Yes. So John, if, I, if I'm not answering your question correctly, um, I apologize. You, could, you can write back in and clarify. Uh, I am not aware of, um, we, don't, we don't have a lot of customers who are doing uh, e-commerce where they're selling parts uh, on their site. Uh, I can I can give some um, ballpark estimates. Uh, really, internet retailer publishes some some information about 
uh, what are industry and best practice um, conversion rates um, you know, for your particular vertical. I'd suggest you go there. Uh, you know, shopping, if, if, if you're looking at like your shopping cart conversion rate, uh, you would want that, in my opinion, at least 60, 65 percent, but um, I don't know how applicable that is to, to most of the folks on our call. Right, right, but, but I, and hey, if you are selling parts online and you're trying to find a way also to get more business for your fixed ops, then Google Analytics can definitely help you on those things, right, Chris? Absolutely. Okay. And that, you know what, Eliana, that's a great point. Um, service, you know, the, if you have a, a, a service site that's separate from your vehicle uh, website or if you're just tracking the service area of your site, you know, those calls to action and the, the actions that you want to take, uh, that you want the traffic that goes to those parts of your site to take are substantially different from what you want on a vehicle site. You're not trying to get someone to fill out a lead you're trying to get them to call you or print out a coupon or um, schedule service online. So it is much less important for you to track uh, lead submission there and much more important for you to set up goals that track some of those other things. Right. You know, and this leads in almost perfectly to the next question which came in from Steve. He said, and he, he wrote in two questions. So um, he said more important question than the first question he wrote in was, how do you change the goal amount. I can never find a field to actually change that dollar figure. Is that something that, did you have that in the slideshow and maybe we just didn't see it? Or? Uh, I, so you can set the uh, goal value. Wow, I'm really going to have to go back here. <laughs> well, I can could, I could so, tell you what his first question was. If you, <laughs> sure, uh, go ahead. Well, he says, because, oh, he wrote back in, thank you, Steve. He says, it's already set now, but how do I change it now? Well, so, how do you change it? So maybe at first he thought, hey, let me set this at 20 bucks, but he really wants to change it to like 25 bucks, I would say. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, what why doesn't, uh, I'm sorry, who was that, Mike? Steve. Steve. Steve, sorry about that. Steve, if you can send me an email, um, I will follow up with you on that. Um, I can certainly show people where to set up their, uh, I thought I could, set up their goals right now. Yeah, I thought it was in there, but maybe, maybe it wasn't. Uh, sorry, I'm not very good at driving in reverse here. <laughs> All right, no worries. Let's back up here. Steve? So, right here. As you're setting up your goal, you get to assign a goal, a goal value right there. Right. So once you've set it up and it's saved, how do you go back in and change it? Or do you have to delete that goal and set it up again? I think that you may have to set up a new goal and delete the old one. But um, again, if, if uh, Steve wants to follow up with me, I can sort of walk in. I, it's probably sort of a, a, a one-off question and I can probably get, um, I can probably resolve this issue for him. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because Steve wrote in he has 20 goals that he set up months ago and he can't change them once it's set up. Steve, that's awesome. You put in 20 goals. Rock on, dude. <laughs> okay, um, but he did say will do. Thanks. He's going to get in touch with you. It's at chris at dealeron.com. All right, Steve? All right, let's move on to some more questions. Okay, Steve's first question, by the way, was... Google Analytics shows average page load time is 9.23 seconds. Is that too long in your opinion? Uh, it, it depends. It depends on what's on the page. Um, if the, Actually, this is another new uh, or relatively new feature of um, Google Analytics. If you associate your webmaster tools with your Google Analytics, you can look at um, you can look at load time for your different pages and there is additional um, code that you have to you have to add that will even show you user um, user time so that you're looking at how long it takes your users to interact with that page 
um, I would re before before um, you made any decisions based on that load time, I, I would suggest um, Google gives the opportunity for anybody whose site gets less than I think it's I want to say it's uh, 10,000 visits a, a day, some, something extremely large. Uh, Google samples the those reports, but if your site um, generates the amount of traffic that is typical of most dealerships, then you can actually change that. So instead of just looking at one in a thousand or ten thousand um, visits, Google will report off of all of your traffic, and so you'll have a much more robust measure of what your load times are. So again, if you want to follow up with me, Steve, specifically on the load time for that page, I, I could try and help you with that. But I, I would also, before you made any business decisions off of one of those metrics, suggest that, that you try and look at um, uh, making sure that, you've, that you're measuring all of the traffic instead of just the sample that Google will do by default. Okay. Steve, looks like you, oh, Steve already wrote in. Great, thanks. And Chris, I need you to go back to your, your mug shot again. I don't know why I have to keep reminding you of this. <laughs> okay, next it comes from Jennifer. She, wrote, she writes in, we've only been using Google Analytics for a few months, but don't really know what to do with it or where to start. And Jen, I don't think you're alone, my friend. I really don't. I think, uh, I think it's a very, very powerful, powerful tool. I think a lot of dealerships um, know how a cursory review of it, but don't know how to really delve into it like, like Chris or, or other experts like him. But she goes on to say, I use it mostly to see where our customers are coming from and sources they are using to try and target those areas. I haven't learned much on bounce rate and not familiar with what that is and how it works. I guess I could use some training. It's a great course, but I think I just might need something more basic to start. Now, Jennifer, before I ask Chris to explain what a bounce rate is, I'm going to let you know, answer the survey afterwards. There's going to be a question in there that's going to ask if you would like a free analytics review by a Google Analytics certified specialist. And if you do and you think that might be helpful to you, then that's the time and place to let us know. We'll get with you and see how we can help you so you can understand Google Analytics more because it is a really great, powerful tool. So Chris, maybe you could expand a little bit more on the importance of a bounce rate. Sure. So the bounce rate is, is actually very simple. For however many visits come to a page on your site, land on that page, the percentage of them that don't do anything further on your website. So if I come to your home page and I don't see anything relevant to what I was hoping to find there and I leave your site and I'm gone for more than 30 minutes, then Google will call that a bounce. So you want, obviously, lower bounce rates. You want the traffic that you're sending to your site to engage with your site. Uh, as, as I was, um, I may have gone too quickly through this, but if, for instance, if you have organic search traffic and it's coming to your site and you have a high bounce rate on anything in, in, in the organic uh, portion of your traffic, it would tend to indicate that that page it's probably not designed that well because Google only sends traffic to it that should be relevant to that page. If you're doing paid search, it may be a different problem. It could be that the landing page that you're driving that traffic to, if it has a high bounce rate, if it has lots of people who click on the ad, come to the page, and it's not relevant to them, so they leave, it could be that, that um, you need to either change the content of the ad or you may not be using the best page on your site for that particular traffic. I think that was a perfect explanation. So, uh, Jen, and anyone else who's on the webinar, again, Google Analytics is very, it's, it's, oh, it's simple, but it's not easy. You know, it's, it's complicated and it's addictive, and, and the deeper you delve into it, boy, you can almost analyze practically anything about your website. Right, Chris? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> so if That's you need, the idea. Anything if, important. If you need more help, or, or maybe you want to ask Chris a, a question offline, there's his, his contact information. We welcome that. And like I said, 
Um, fantastic presentation, Chris. And honestly, we could do probably 10 more webinars on Google Analytics and still not even, you know, make an, an incredible dent into everything that Google Analytics can do. So I'm hoping, and audience, you're with me, right? I'm hoping that Chris will come back and do another webinar specifically on a certain facet of Google Analytics maybe in the near future. Chris, what do you think? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so, and again, to, to your point earlier, Aliana, we, we try to make sure that these webinars are as relevant and educational as possible. So if people are filling out the surveys afterwards and they have specific aspects of Google Analytics or another topic entirely that they would like to see a, an upcoming webinar about, then, you know, let us know and we'll try and make that happen for you. Absolutely. And, and you know what, Chris, we're just past the top of the hour. So any questions that we didn't get to during the time allotted, we're going to answer by email later today. And of course, I want to remind the audience that a link to download a copy of today's webinar recording is going to e be emailed to you later today for your reference. And please, like I said, feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. Today's webinar is also going to be posted online within 24 hours. So just go to dealeron.com slash webinars to view our upcoming webinar schedule or access any of our past webinars too. Also, at the conclusion of today's webinar, short survey, mentioned it a couple times, fill it out because we always need the feedback. We need the feedback so we can keep getting better and better. And we're going to randomly select some winners from all the completed surveys to get some Google prizes. And, and of course, like I said, qualify for that free analytics review by a Google Analytics certified specialist. You certainly don't want to miss out on that. Now, don't forget. Dealeron is going to be at the upcoming Digital Dealer Convention in Las Vegas. It's October 23, 24, 25 at the Mirage in Vegas, baby. It's the biggest and the best event for dealers and managers to really get a hang on how to use technology and the Internet to sell more cars. So if you're going to be there, we'll be there. Booth 1211, please stop by and see us. And if you are going to be there, please check out our speaking sessions from some members of the Dealer On executive, executive team. They are going to be fantastic and they're putting on some really, really great seminars. And like I said, booth 1211, remember it. Now, invitations are going to be going out tomorrow for next week's webinar. Seven ways to influence and measure the zero moment of truth with Julio Gonzalez. He is the Vice President of Operations for Haystack Digital Marketing. And, you know, I think by now almost every dealership has heard about ZMOT, the Zero Moment of Truth, and they may, you may even have read the entire study, but you probably are still wondering how you can use all that information to a competitive advantage. Well, then this is the webinar you're going to want to see because it's going to be jam-packed with information you need. It'll have lessons on budget organization, impression share, measuring engagement, mobile campaigns, display, retargeting, attribution, Bing, and anything else we can stick in there too. So one thing's for sure, if you're ready to take full advantage of the zero moment of truth, then this is the webinar you can't afford to miss. This is going to be another fabulous presentation by your friends at DealerOn. So don't forget, DealerOn's weekly webinars are held every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. We have some awesome webinar subjects planned for the rest of this year. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding these webinars or our topics, feel free to contact me directly. My name is Eliana Raggio. I'm on every social network available. Please come find me or track me down anywhere online or email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and we hope to see you all on a future webinar. In